Hi everybody, Kevin and Robin here this week talking to you about some new wines that we've got in. But first off, I want to say a big thanks to Robin because my mom was pretty darn happy awesome. on Mother's Day. I think we made a lot of moms happy on Mother's Day, so nice work. Those uh, packs were super popular. And yeah, they uh, went over really well. I even got to indulge in a little oh stuff yeah. from one of those packs on Mother's nice. Day too. Nice, I bought you one. Yeah. It's pretty nice. It might have been me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a gift to yourself is still a gift. It's all right. Uh, this week we've got some fun stuff. We've got the best wines, which are really old favorites of mine. We've been working with these wines for like over 20 years. I love these wines. Some of my best experiences, no pun intended, are uh, from the, these wines. Um, I really like the style of them. So I'll let you talk a little bit about these while I uh, taste this first one. All right. So yeah, the best wines uh, coming out of Great Western, so um, big area within Victoria and Australia. The best family is actually one of the original families ever producing wine out of that region. So yeah. they started back in the early 1800s, um, 1866 actually being their founding year. Which is pretty cool because most times we think about Europe as being these really old multi-generational wineries, right? So actually in the new world we have one right there with best, which is really mm -hmm. as old as most of the wines we get out of France or Italy or even older. Totally. Um, yeah, 1866, so they've been making wine for a really long time. And then the Swan Hill Vineyard, which this particular Shiraz comes from, uh, they bought in 1930. Wow. So that's been around for a while. That's amazing. Because when you think about a, a vineyard that's that old, so this is fruit from a vineyard that was purchased in 1930, so the vines actually were planted, I think partly in 1930 and then partly in the mid 70s. But you think we're going to be dealing with a wine that's a little more expensive. Mm -hmm because it's old vines and because it tastes really, really good. But what are we actually looking at here? For We're this actually guy? looking at 1995, which is crazy for that wine. Super crazy. And there's so much to like about this wine. If you're doing some barbecue this weekend, I think this is about as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. And I think you really gotta, you really gotta look at Bess uh, a little bit differently maybe than other uh, Aussie Shirazes because I think people have kind of given Australian Shiraz a bit of a bad rap or, or at least lumped it into this, um, this pool where it's all kind of big and goopy and jammy and sappy and this one's not this one is actually pretty fresh yeah they're kind of a little bit more cool climate style Shiraz which yeah. means you get a bit more of that pepperiness <clears throat> and yeah definitely less on that jammy side of things it's a bit more elegant a little more restrained pretty yeah. interesting I know I really like this wine I mean you can even drink this on its own I mean it's it's fresh enough and it's mm -hmm. it's got a lot going on I mean the nose just has that really like kind of bright, spicy, it's really alluring. It makes you want to go right back to it and drink more. Or you can make some lamb burgers or something on the grill. That'd be pretty good. Perfect with this. That's really the call. I was going to come up with a food pairing, but I think you just you came up with a better <laughs> one than I had. But any barbecue, really, and just drink it on its own. This is, a for 20 bucks, a spectacular, mm -hmm. spectacular deal. So that's up on the website now. Yep. So you can grab a bottle of that. And uh, we've also got two other ones from Bass. So yeah, so we have um, the other Shiraz, which again, kind of similar in style, just a little bit fuller and richer and more generous. But again, that cool climate, like more peppery sort of style of Shiraz. And they have a Cabernet Sauvignon as well. And since we're talking about cool climate, what they'll do with the Cab is they actually let it ripen a little bit longer and let the fruit right. stay on there just so that you get a little more richness and generosity from the Cab. So. Cool. Mm -hmm. I know I've had lots of old bottles of this, and these are in like like thirty two bucks. Totally thirty two ninety five on those, which is incredible value for those. Those mm -hmm. really would compete with most you know California cabs in the fifty sixty range, and you can pop that in the cellar for as long as you really want to, yeah. and it just gets better and better. And if that's not your thing, rose packs, these are flying. They're flying. I don't out think of I've there. ever seen anything sell as fast <laughs> as these are selling right now. So because they missed out on the rosé festival. I know. Gotta drink your rosé. Yeah, you gotta get it in somehow. So six rosés that you've picked out. Um, really fun wines. So you've got uh, these these packs that you can just come in and grab, right? So yeah. So we've got the two different packs. I mean, we've got the mixed pack that's ninety nine dollars, and we've got the rosé pack that's ninety nine dollars, and they're both going to be set up in store in one of these little red bags. Cool. So that you just come on in, and if you want to shop with us, because we are open. Yeah. Uh, you can come on in and grab your six wines all preset and ready to go. Yeah, pretty cool. So we are open again. We should mention we've got all the social distancing paraphernalia out there, mm -hmm. so you'll be safe. Um, but we've got also things just ready to go in bags. So if you really just want to come in and grab something, you can. But we still have the free delivery. Can't beat that. So you can order it up online or you can come by and say hi. Unfortunately, we just can't taste. That's it. I know. 
but we're still we're still fun to hang out with even if we can't give you free booze. So come say hi. And one more thing, this guy behind us. I know, what's this all about? So exciting news, if you haven't heard, we've got our second location opening September 1st. So that's gonna be at the University District, which is, if you draw a line kind of halfway between the Children's Hospital and the Olympic Oval, it's right there. We're gonna be right next to the Save On Foods, a cool coffee shop, all kinds of cool stuff going in there, some really good restaurants, a hotel. It's gonna be that big new park in right behind the shop too, Yeah, we're gonna right? have a one acre park and go have lunch yeah. out there, it's gonna be amazing. So that's going to be opening up September 1, if not a little bit earlier. So we're super excited to be announcing that. So and this is a drawing of what the actual shop is going to look like, right? Yeah, it, it looks, looks like pretty. that already almost. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, they're well along building it. So we got a cool mezzanine in there. We're going to be able to do tastings while we're mm -hmm. open, which is super exciting. So we can do tastings all day long. They're not in the way. So yeah, cool things happening in Market Wine. So hopefully we'll see you down here this weekend. Very good.